is running late. He will take Wayne's seat. He will be here around 6, 6.30. It's his week. He can come whenever he wants. Pretty excited to, to see how the table dynamic develops early on in this session. I know we're playing 2550, no limit hold'em here today, guys. Everything's cash. So all the pain and suffering you see is coming out of each player's pockets individually. Most of these guys are bought in for uh, 200 big blinds. And some of these guys are actually around 25k deep, so we can get some massive pots today. It should be fun. Yeah. And right away we see Ryan opening with 6-5 suited and Keith 3 betting him with Ace 3 offsuit. Ryan completes. And we have a King 9 deuce. Keith has the backdoor nut flush draw. C bets and Ryan throws it away. First point for Keith takes it down with Ace three. Very creative three bet with Ace three offsuit, huh? Nice little blocker there. On that flop, he also has backdoor nut flush draw. Yeah, and backdoor straight draw. Exactly. So if he gets called and turn rolls off a heart, he might go for the triple, right? Or he might check it back and realize his equity either way. But having the blocker Ace of Hearts is really nice there. Yeah, it's a very powerful card when he can just barrel at at his will now. <laughs> So shout out to some of you guys that are in here early. Texas AG98, Watt Bry, what's up? I know we got Dima here, Timmy Time Iffy, TG or TX AG98, I punt stacks and chip avalanche, big city banker. Thanks to all of our subs for supporting the channel. Y'all are what allow us to put out this content every day. Thank each and every one of you, Tie Dye Panda, for being here. Much love to everybody who comes out early. Looking forward to doing this five hour cast today. Special long content all week long. Today, myself, Matt, and JJ in the booth. I think uh, Doug Polk will be joining us in around 15 minutes to an hour, somewhere in there. He's still driving from the Vegas. Yeah, he's going to be tired, but he'll probably have a coffee. He'll be ready to play. So we have a race from Keith again. Uh, it's 175 with pocket sixes. Alec flat calls in the hijack with 910. And we have a five way. Flop coming for you guys. Win on the button with the Jack Eight Hearts. Oh, you have Sharon. Really? Yes, yeah, taking this. Ooh, actually. So you're pretty much here every day. From Antonio the big, is he going to squeeze? Yeah, Antonio has, uh, I thought he already flat called, but it looks like he's ready to make a move. Just calls, actually. Oh, I was going to tease this. I was going to be a little surprised if he squeezes that hand. It's kind of a, an interesting one to, to go for the play with. Comes 5 7 7. Looks like two sixes still in the lead here. Alex Rally does have the backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. Could see a float here. It's tough to float this multi way though. Especially when you got three guys, four guys back behind you, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Keith bet out of turn and then he still bets. It looks like he bets 300. 425 actually. Looks like no one's going to put up a fight and he's going to take down this pot. Wayne thought about it there for a second. Wayne could get very creative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out to IMJ Stu. What's up, homie? Real Eggy, what up? T Bake Six, what's up? Thank you for guys for being with here with me and Matt. Avoid the nine to five. We will be breaking down as much strategy as you guys want and some uh, physical tells, right, Matt? Absolutely, yeah. I've been uh, playing a huge amount of hours this year already. I think I'm already it's the middle of February. I think I'm already like 350 hours deep for the year. It's been Boom. the you, sickness. Dude. You got more hours than me. <laughs> That's pretty sick. Not a lot of people could do that, Matt. Yeah, I didn't get to play last year, so this year I'm... Uh, You're extra hyped. Sometimes it's good to take it. a little break away from oh, the game. Oh, absolutely. So you come back refreshed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I come yeah, back like that every time I'm from vacation. Yeah. I'm ready to just hit the foul. My brain's thinking clairvoyant. Yep. I'm ready to go. Dude, I came back so fresh and sat down. Immediate massive heater. Just apologizing to everybody every hand. Just good sorry. life. <laughs> yeah. Good life. Yeah. So Wayne raises it up to 150 with ace eight from the cutoff. Israeli Ron votes his queen nine from the big blind. Usually that's a defend, right, Wayne? Or was because his sizing was kind of big? I think uh, most of the time when Wayne raises, Ron's going to defend wider. But maybe because the game's playing a little bigger, maybe because he's not sure how Wayne's going to play in a bigger game, right? Maybe just feeling out what's going on initially here. For sure. And Wayne does have a more snug image at the table. So Israeli Ron does know that because they've played quite a bunch. So maybe he thinks uh, Wayne is playing tight. But Wayne is very capable of making some plays, definitely. Definitely. And it's also a much tougher game on average than a lot of the games that we've seen. Um, when you're playing this big and you have some bigger names coming into the, into the area, getting out of line is definitely more risky. 
Um, you also can pull off some bluffs in some spots <laughs> that in a softer game you might not be able to, coincidentally, but there's, again, the risk of being figured out, right? For sure. Some of these really good players can find exploitative folds in a spot that uh, maybe a more beginning player would never fold in, Yeah. for example. So we have a race to 150 from Wayne with pocket sixes. Antonio defends his button with queen jack offsuit. I thought you just had 50. Yeah, look at what nice spot. Can't be hiding chips like that. They were there, man. You have a really bad alternate. What? What? Oh. And it looks like we have another I'm a good alternate. Can I buy a chip off again? Five, four, five. Okay, Wayne still in the lead. C bets two twenty-five. Six is running good today so far. Yeah, but here we go, and Antonio has a float if he wants to with two overs. First thing I'm noticing here is uh, he's tapping his feet under the table. You can see him bouncing a little bit there, and his head's super far down. The little head dip right there. I'd wonder if, if for example, he had Ace Five suited, if he would do the head dip as he called on the flop. And look at Wayne turns the boat a oh monster, my God. and he checks it. He check check. That's crazy because he knew Antonio was capable. Of and there's there. the jack. So in this spot, I mean, Wayne could definitely just have a hand like Ace Jack here, and he understands that absolutely. When he checks on the turn, he's saying like, maybe my opponent floated, maybe my opponent just called with something like sevens. Bets the river, gets snapped off. <laughs> and Antonio and shows, shows the, the float. <laughs> Shout out to iPun Stacks, Surf and Snowboard. What's up? Thank you for tuning in. Poker Nemo, what up? How are you guys? Ask us all the questions. Yeah, so usually, so you were saying that Antonio was bouncing up and down a little bit. That's the happy feet, right? The happy feeding under the table, it, it can mean a, a few different things. In general, I always look for groupings of tells. So, like, one thing individually. For example, last night uh, I was playing 4080, and I got check raised on the turn by a guy who gave off a strength tell. He tilted his head and showed me his jugular. And I was just like, ah, shit, right? But I know that unless I see two or three things together, it's not always strength, right? And in that spot, he actually turned a combo draw and was simply comfortable with it. So it doesn't just mean that they have a strong hand. It means that they feel comfortable with their position. Gotcha. So you got to look for about two or three and correlate. Absolutely. You can't just take one and correlate it as strong. And then you also need to, to figure out each individual player's baseline as well. So he might, for example, um, happy feet or tap his feet under the table often in general. So it might not mean too much. It's just I'll always point out the things, whether they're right or they're wrong, because they're often wrong, but usually right. Uh, I'll point out the things that I'm looking for and, and in general are watching for. Gotcha. And here Wayne raises it up, trying to go back to back, like Drake says. 9-7 suited, 150 from middle position. Ryan defends his big line with 10-6 suited. Wayne flops a pair. Backdoor flush draw for Wayne here. Ryan's just going to chuck fold every time. And do you like uh, Wayne's bet there? On the flop, I think, um, so Wayne could have 9-7 of hearts, 9-7 of spades, 9-7 of diamonds in this spot. And so because of that, I think with the worst kicker nines in our range, which is going to be a hand like 9-7, uh, I would prefer to always check back on the flop. If we were going to bet with some combos of our worst kicker nines, I think doing it with the backdoor flush draw that allows us to call a check raise is better than doing it with 9-7 of diamonds, for example. So I think like that's the one combo, or 9-7 of clubs in that spot, but I think we had saw the 9 of clubs. So in general, uh, I want to see bet my ace nines. I want to check my 9-7s in general. Unless, like Matt said, you have the backdoor flush draw. So Wayne might have been on our thinking, yeah. or he might have just got lucky by randomization. <laughs> I'm not sure yeah. yet. And some players will, will randomize uh, Good job, in, Wayne, though. in random ways, right? Some people actually, I played no bullshit at all last year during LAPC, actually. I played with uh, 4080 with a guy who every time he raised, he would roll dice in front of him. <laughs> and then when you bet, he would roll dice, and then he would either call or raise. True gambler. Yeah, it was so funny. Like, it was so funny. So we have a raise from Kane, jumps in the mix, 150 with ace five of diamonds. Keith, three bets with the seven deuce. I wonder if they're playing the seven deuce game. <laughs> so sick. And you can see Keith staring down his opponent there a second ago. So a lot of times, you can see the way he's behaving right now. A lot of times when somebody has a very strong hand and they three bet, they'll be very stoic. They won't move as much, and they're not going to follow the action with their eyes as much. And there can be very subtle differences between the following of the action and the kind of like being in their own world. So for in other words, when somebody three bets free and they go into the, into the tank and they're kind of in their own world, like, I'm not going to do anything. That's like red flags, massive red flags, especially if you can get two or three strength tells during this situation. Very, very dangerous. But in this spot where he's moving around, he's smiling, right? 
and uh, and he's looking at the opponent in that spot, like I would definitely think like I'm not sure if he's gonna behave that way when he has aces. Yeah, or kings, for example. And Kane takes it down with the four bet, which is awesome play by Kane. Um, yeah, and usually, Matt, I would think it's the opposite with that. Yeah, like, so I would think if someone's fidgety and they're really relaxed because yeah. they're able to move around, but you're saying it's the opposite, so that's so crazy to look So pre-flop, specifically, Limit Hold'em's an amazing game because it allows you to have a, a much larger sample size of getting to interact with people, right? And um, there's a lot of documented stuff as well on uh, one of the training sites for Tells called BeyondTells.com that I've been working with for a long time. A lot of data, actually, that says pre-flop, uh, looseness and smiling and a, and a very genuine laugh after a pre-flop raise, uh, especially before the flop happens, usually indicates a hand that's like a suited connector, has a lot of playability, it's usually not a monster, and then post-flop relax after betting is usually a, sh a stronger hand. Gotcha. It's usually like a, a stronger made hand, but, but pre-flop specifically, most people are more like focused when they have the good hands, and then post-flop, uh, when, they, when they're focused, it's more, more likely to be the, the bluff side. Gotcha. They're going to freeze, they're not going to move a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. But once again, you have, you have to correlate that. Gotcha. So we have a raise pre-flop with ace-five suited from Israeli Ron. Keith calls on the button. Ron C-bets, and Keith raises is the 625 and Ron calls wow. with just a pair with no backdoor <laughs> flush draw. This turns into go check check a lot. It should. Yeah. And if I'm keep, I'm just trying to get my hand to show down at this Absolutely. point. Absolutely. And check check and snapping off a riverbed is beautiful. <laughs> check check. Check check. Matt it called is. it. And you can see that time his behavior on the turn. He was more like kind of looking at the board, just kind of like looking down, not so much looking around. And this would be a perfect oh, no, river card for Israeli Ron to turn his hand to a bluff. Totally agree. His five has very little showdown value at this point. Especially the nut low in his range. Yes, and he can rep the, the queen nine, the king queen. He blocks the ace queen. He can, and he can rep all the gutters that he had that had a queen. Yep. Jack queen, king ten. So if I'm Ron, I like to turn my hand into a bluff there, just because you lose all your showdown value. How about your bet sizing in that spot? What was the pot? Uh, let's just talk percentage. Um, the They're I'm both covered, right? So. Oh, okay. So Keith is unlikely to have a two pair in that hand. Exactly. So I would probably just make it about 80% pot. I like it. But if I put him on an o like a two pair type hand, yeah. I A, may not try to bluff it. Exactly. Or B, try to bet like one and a half times Yeah, pot. exactly. Because you have to target a sizing to achieve your goal. Yes. Right? And you're really just trying to move him off of top pair weak kicker or second pair or some kind of fancy rivered pair somehow, right? Where he raises with a gutter, turns a pair, checks it back. Absolutely. Type stuff. Yeah. So uh, you guys are lucky. We got a 25-50 no, no limit cash game. And me and Matt, we love to break down strategy. So you guys are going to get a lot of strategy, maybe even too much strategy all night. Let me give you guys the chip denominations really quickly. The white chips are $100 chips. The, uh, the uh, white with little sky blue rims are $1 chips. The yellow and uh, brown chips are $5 chips. The purple chips are $25 chips. And the big uh, pink with white chips that you cannot see too good on the table. They are $5,000 chips. We are playing a live cash game from Los Angeles, the Bicycle Casino. Oh, and NFC1? Yeah. See, yeah, see, one, three, five, and six talking a lot so far. It's always interesting to see like how the social dynamics develop as you start off into the game and then how they uh, continue through the dry streaks. For sure, and behind the game we have a uh, the host at the bicycle also putting together all these fight fantastic games right there, Ryan Feldman. Thank you for putting all these games together. You're doing a great job, by the way. Doug should be here in the next 30 minutes to an hour, you guys. He's actually currently driving from Vegas. And Max is officially in the mix, Matt. He raises to 150 with A7 suited, takes it down. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. The, I thought there weren't 51 says, do these guys drive around with 20K on them? No, <laughs> they do not. Most of these guys will either wire money to the casinos or have boxes. It's definitely not safe to travel around with that amount of money, obviously. For example, I play big at Commerce and at the bike, and I travel around L.A. quite a bit. Uh, I have a box everywhere and personally use that. So it's definitely not a good idea to, to play big and carry cash a lot. When I was young and reckless, exactly. I might have carried around a lot of cash. But now, uh, I was with my younger brother. He asked me to borrow some money. I'm like, dude, all I got is 200 bucks on me. Yeah. So you would think, like, since I play the bigger games of the casino, I'd always have money on me. But it's not the – that's, like, fantasy, and that's not the case. I leave all my money in either boxes or casino bank accounts so that if I was to get robbed, they're not going to rob me for much. So all these guys probably do the same. We have a raise from Alec from the hijack to 150 with the King Jack offsuit. Wayne three bets Alex Rally, and they do have a little bit of a history, Matt. One game that I commentated on 
Wayne got Alec in about three pucks. So I'm sure there is a little bit of history, a little bit of a rivalry, yeah. friendly rivalry. I know they're, uh, they're somewhat buddies off the table. Yeah. So. I know Wayne's only playing uh, 100 bigs there, though, so Alec's not going to get two out of line three flop. It's a little easier to stack off when they're more shallow. Than standard no limit spot, raise with King Jack, get three bet. Uh, Face that, with the reverse and put odds and just fold it. Like, when it's, right. you know, or now I'm like, keep jackpot, right. jackpot, ace, 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 you start having a sweat. <laughs> you, should, uh, you should angle someone by pretending that there's a jackpot in this game. Three handed. Don't do come on, don't kill a jackpot. Don't kill <laughs> I would want to we have an open with king queen uh, suited from Alex Rally. There was a straddle. Okay. Kane wakes up with pocket queens. Got the squeeze from the button here from Kane. First three bit I think we've seen from Kane. Notice how Kane's behavior here, he's looking down. Not really following the action too much. He's definitely looking to the guy to his left, but we don't yeah, see him like staring at every other opponent, kind of more in his own world. Right. This is the on, iconic behavior that you'll see right. from a player with a stronger only hand could be here. on <laughs> average. <laughs> looking away from the table, also another sign of strength. <laughs> there. All of a sudden, something grabs your interest, not even with the table there. I know in um, uh, I which Andy. book was that, uh, <laughs> Reading Towels. They said it was uh, the analogy of the blood diamond. You're movie, just funny, yes. Where <laughs> you're looking for the diamond, and he has a diamond, yeah, and he's looking away because he doesn't want to give away where the diamond's at. Exactly. So, same thing, correct? Yes. Uh, just folds through did here. Did you see Antonio? He just mucked ace king. I did. I was wondering so if the graphics. Yeah. It's so that sick. That you can do that. So Antonio, even though he's a YouTuber, YouTuber, he knows how to play. Yeah, out of like, position there. He's out of position. Yeah. You either go two ways, I think, with that hand. I mean, calling is not the worst, but I definitely like probably four betting and then yeah. fold before a call. I agree with that. So that's pretty sick. What a sick fold. And uh, Kane already three bet and a four bet. So, and he's mixing in his bets very well with three betting, four betting, four bet with the ace five. Oh, that's right. Oh, he so four bet the hand. Yeah, four bet with the nice. ace five against the seven deuce. <laughs> I really want to see uh, Keith's behavior when he three bets with a strong hand. After we've seen that seven deuce three bet. Ace king is like you're. It's like you're hoping to be like a mediocre hand of four people. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> You can leave them stacked here. They don't have to be spread. You can leave them stacked. They don't have to be spread. And Keith from under the gun, 150 with King 7 suited. 150? Uh, he's, yes. He's retired. He's retired. So you can see Keith's behavior here on the on the bottom right. He was moving around. He took a drink from his water. He's moving around quite a bit preflop. Once again, correlating the looseness and relaxation preflop with uh, a slightly weaker holding, which is opposite of what most people actually think. And we'll see how many different examples we can get at, not just on Keith, but on on different players today. Gotcha. And another four-way pot. This game is turning into a smaller right. game all yeah, of a which sudden. I was, like, really about Everyone it. wants like, to play hands. Like, like, cool like, Ryan and Flop's top pair here from the C5. We'll see if he can take Ooh, this one down. Like six I like checking here. I like uh, going ahead and letting the turn roll off here with 10-3. But the big, big kicker 10s, a lot of times I'll lead out on a board like this, like an ace-10, king-10s. The 10-3s, though, we want to just bluff catch with. You want to have some top pair in your check hall range, definitely. So the three of us had to have played together. And Ron going to make a move here with the king-queen. It looks like he's floating to, oh, actually, excuse to me. make a straight yes, sir. to the jack. Looks like Keith C-bets here with the back door, second nut flush draw, and straight draw. And Ryan gets rid of the best hand. Probably if Iron would have folded. There's the jack. Actually, no, no, Ryan's still in the hand. Ryan did overcall there on the flop. He did overcall. He's at least going to call one street there. Yeah, you can't really fold all of your 10x, closing the action there in that spot. Yeah. Turn comes beautiful for Israeli <laughs> Ron. <laughs> Keith actually picks up double gutted on the turn as well. And he bets huge. He bets 1300 in the 1600. And Iron snap yeah. like 2.5 raises. <laughs> and Keith gets away from it really quickly. 
and I sense I didn't like it either. What do you think about Ron flatting there? Because you have to give Keith a strong hand because he raised under the gun and he barreled into two people twice. Exactly. Um, I think in that position, a lot of the time, you're going to see Keith having a hand like, since you have king, queen, like the hand like two aces, two jacks, two tens, two nines, he definitely can have two kings, two queens, but we block that, so it's not quite as likely. Um, I think he also can just have a hand like ace queen of hearts with the flush draw and the two overs and the straight draw in that position. So you don't mind putting it in the race because you're you're waiting him to strong hands, correct? I think so because because the two brothers usually strike. I think that going for the, the raise in that spot's very defensible. Yeah. I think raising the flops actually is is okay as well, but in general, out of position, uh, we're not going to be check raising the field like too often there for value. So I think just calling with the king queen is totally fine. Was it grubby? So. I'm so used to when he grabs the, the 350 that it's being erased because I'm, I'm usually commentating on the 510, right? Oh, and it looks huge. Yeah, so when I saw the 350, I was like, here comes the play. <laughs> Wayne in the mix with King Queen suited, raised up to 150. I was like, I'll just do what this guy's doing. So I just go like Demon Hunter dots versus Orc. And Keith and defends his big line with eight like, deuce yeah, suited. Flush draw for Keith here. Gut shot straight draw for Wayne. No, I, I, I like Wayne's check back here. I think we do want to bet with king queen high sometimes. I actually did see bet here. In general, I would check with a hand like king queen of spades and king queen of clubs and see bet with hands like king queen of diamonds and hearts in this position. You want to have king queen in both your, your bet and check back range. Well, you also can check it back because you don't want to lose your equity if you do get check raised on this board. Yeah, exactly. And he does get check here and does have to fold, unfortunately. It does happen. So I think with a hand like King Queen of Hearts in that spot, if you bet and you get raised, you can float with the bet or flush draw and the gutter in that spot. Whereas with King Queen of Spades, since we want to have combos of King Queen in, in both our betting and our checking range, that I really like checking the hand and realizing the equity. You know, maybe we turn a king or a queen and can call a bet now with the gutter and pair. Maybe it's good. And uh, maybe we just bank the 10 sometimes there, right? Yeah, absolutely. And also on those type of boards, like one of my, I don't know, I'm about to give you guys some secrets. On those type of boards, I don't de mind the delay C bet. Yeah. Just because the, the small pairs are going to probably call you on the flop. But once they kind of don't set mine the turn and don't hit, they're more likely to give it up now. Definitely. So if you bet the flop, they're going to call you with pocket sixes. Whereas now when you delay C bet the turn, they're like, oh, two overs. Now he's betting. They're just going to more likely give it up, I think. So, it's one of my little secrets. You know, you know, Ryan you know on the bun with King Queen of Hearts. You know I want a piece. <laughs> Raises it up. Israeli Ron limps 4 3, isolating Israeli Ron. You can't pass up bargain, can you? Ryan. 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 Let me know Ron he's limp calls 4 more. 3 off. Flops a pair. And you can see how loose the behavior was from both players <laughs> pre flop here. Neither player has a premium holding. Just another note on that, right? Gotcha. We got a little negate there from Ryan Free. Touched his nose when the ace rolled off. Very rarely will you see a player touch the nose or scratch the nose when the ace hits if they have it. And Ron actually bets the turn here. Ryan floats with the king queen. Gets check two on the river. <laughs> Ryan checks back, I believe. No, he's no. going for it. There he goes. Pretty good spot there when the, when the uh, eight of spades rolls off. He should have a flush pretty often. He definitely has ace X quite a bit. Every once in a while, he has a hand like pocket eights and didn't see bet, but that would be very surprising. So usually just going to be an ace or a flush here. <laughs> Ron does give it up. What, what so sick, and Ron was thinking about calling, too. Yeah. Um, Do you think there's any chance Ryan could check back king queen on the river there and ever win? Any chance at all? Oh, man, I would say maybe like 15% of the time. Yeah. Is it enough? very small. Is it enough? I don't think so. What the, are there any other worse hands that he floats with on that turn that don't get there on the river that's eight? The eight spades? The shop, you, you get it and you give it no, to Is that the nut low? I think that's like, I mean, his so king high has like, like good absolute like value, but yeah. his relative yeah. value right, right, versus yeah. is really yeah, yeah, Ron's yeah, yeah. hand range yeah. is kind of low on those type of boards, I think. Uh, shout out to and, uh, the yeah, legend so poker Lyman poker, poker in the chat. Give him some what's up, guys? No one wants and to, to talk Jimmy Bluffett. Jimmy Bluffett's in the chat, yes. Matt. This is all, it's all bad yeah, what a legend! Poker, 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 Jimmy poker, Bluffett. Like, you know, yeah, um, Bill Perkins yeah, sent him out for the the PCA. Yeah, I talked to him about it a little bit actually. He said it was a sick experience. He, still, he final table two tables. Yeah, <laughs> so sick, right? Yeah, Bill Perkins is amazing, man. What he does for the Twitch poker community and just glad to see him, you know, participating in in everything that we do. It's awesome. What a legend. He's really in. Jimmy Bluffett representing Live at the Bike like a boss. Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it was really hard. Keith raises it up on the bone. And King Queen finally takes one down. Nice job, Keith. It was hard because of the, uh, uh, the burrow. Was it burrows? 
the, their oh, farms. Oh, yeah, let's do those burrows, yeah. Most of the, the looking and tells and, and how fast people look at their whole cards and stuff is going to be useful preflop. Preflop's actually the number one spot to get reads on how uh, strong people are within their own distribution. So I'm playing very close attention. Coincidentally, it's one of the least amount of times people are guarded about what they actually have. So they're going to give away a lot more information preflop than they will postflop too. Okay, how would you balance sizing tells preflop and like physical tells preflop? Um, in general, like I'm asking, like what's the stronger? I would still say sizing, but yeah, definitely. Um, it depends on the player for sure. There are some players that you know you can see six or seven tells all at once, like groupings in general, and you have some history with them, and that's very very reliable, which obviously would trump sizing stuff. Wow. Uh, and then other players that you know will raise big with their good hands and small with their bad hands, which is also very reliable. So I think it's very player specific. Is the gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I know they're both very important. And Keith raised it up for the cutoff. And Alex Rally three bets for the bow. King seven suited takes it down. I like the three bet here. He definitely blocks some of the the King X type hands. He has a suited King in case he gets called. They're playing a little deeper, so they'll be able to get some full swap action in there. In position. And Alex Image is gold right now because he's been playing very solid. Yeah. Once again, my name is JJ Del Garza. I am upswinging JJ. My co host tonight is Matt Avoid the 9 of 5. If you guys didn't hear my introduction on him, he is a Tells expert. He is also a GTO theorem expert and plays Limit Hold'em for a living. So give him a shout out. Any questions you want to ask of him, go for it. Yeah, much love, JJ. It's always nice to see him around as well. I know you've been destroying the No Limit games for forever around LA. It's been a pleasure to commentate with you today. You know, some people think I'm a fish, so let them think I'm a fish, Matt. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's been losing for seven years. He was like the number one. So we're raised from the hijack with Jack 10 from Keep. Keep is definitely giving the most action thus far. And Alec goes for another three bet. This time he actually wakes up with a hand of pocket queens. You can see Alec doing pretty good about controlling his body language. But you can see... His, both of his hands go back to being folded. Well, These are the kind of things I'm looking for, where his, where his eyes are doing, doing, kind of where his head angle is at. So we weren't sure who Matt Max is in seat eight. He is definitely a professional, going with the four bet. Four bet with ace, deuce, deuce blocker of the pocket aces. Love the play. I think it's a really good play, polarizing his four betting range here. He blocks aces. He blocks ace king. He blocks the ace queen. Alec clearly not going to fold the two queens here. The only thing in time in game flow it's a oh, great one, uh, play but the fact that Alex Riley three bet the hand before he I think he's least likely to be bluffing keep back to back hands. I agree with you I don't think so, he's gonna go light twice in a row right yeah. so this time if I have the ace deuce I pass on it and maybe maybe mix it in like maybe an hour later beautiful dude who remembers Tanya's Tanya what's that I thought you were number one. The, the, the I don't girl. watch the fucking story. <laughs> no, it's the girl from the game. She would like. She had, like you can see Max here after like, four betting, still watching like, the see, conversation from the other side of the table and stuff. And Looks like he gets five so. bet there. <laughs> flashes no, a little bit of sadness and gets the fold. Like, Unfortunately like, for him, wrong like, timing. Yeah, she was like, she was like super over. He runs into the two queens. And Poker X or Poker X asks, "Where's Doug? Doug's on his way, guys. He he left at about one o'clock in Vegas." He's exactly. on his way. He's going to join us. Oh, um, he was in traffic. I live maybe like 10 miles away from the bike. It took me about 50 minutes to get here. I actually, all I ate was a breakfast sandwich before I joined in with you guys. So Doug's in traffic. He's going to be here. He's ready to play. I think I vaguely remember. Shout out to the Ryan Feldman is in the booth with us for a millisecond. Thank you for putting these games together again, Ryan. There were commandos. There was commando. For those of you who are wondering, we are live with you guys in chat today. We're all on a 15-minute delay. Players are obviously playing, and then we're seeing it with you guys on a 15-minute delay, hanging out with y'all. We see Wayne pick up the ace-queen offsuit in the small blind. Does just call the raise. Keith actually raising with the jack-4 off here. Very aggressive preflop here. We see him moving around with his hands a lot preflop, looking around quite a bit. A little bit of a head dip there. King jack nine. Keith pulls ahead with the jack. Should go check check here very often. Yep. Great hand to check back when you raise it. Very, very loose preflop from Keith. Wayne does get there with the queen on the turn, though. And now will Keith bluff with the jack? He decides to bet 100 into 350. Gets called by Wayne. Checks the river. Does he want to pound it here? No, he does not. Checks back. Tries to win with the jack. Runs into the bad news there. 
I think I would have probably just check checked that turn with the Jack Four. Um, if you do bet and you get called, it's not really getting called by a lot of worse hands. You're not really bluffing out a lot of better hands. Wayne's not just going to muck a queen off in there in the turn, for example. I think it worked out in Wayne's favor in that spot for sure. I got to give a special shout out to Aces Rod. You know Aces Rod, Matt. Yeah. He's been under the weather, so I got to give him a shout out. Get well soon. Shout out to B. 